Merlene, Claire, welcome. I'm so glad to have this time with you to talk about women of color on boards. Um, just before we jump into the conversation, just to provide a little bit of context and, and part of the reason I've been very excited about having you both on as, as part of this conversation is, you know, we just saw the research that came out showing that on private boards, only 3% of board directors are women of color. On public boards, that figure is only 4%. So basically, um, you two both as women of color and Black women uh, on boards is somewhat of an anomaly, um, right, statistically. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about how you got to the positions you're in and the type of advice that you might have uh, for women of color, both on boards or who aspire to boards. Um, So let's jump right in, shall we? Marlene, I want to turn to you um, and I want to ask you, you know, what boards do you sit on? And also, how do you know Claire? All right. Well, I sit on a number of boards, three, uh, several public and three private. Some of actually one um, that uh, GV is part of, GitLab. Um, and I am spending most of my time on boards. Um, and what I, what's not obvious is also that I spend time really focusing on how I can give forward to my friends and community um, and advising a number of CEOs and startups. Um, and I've, I'll date myself by sharing that if you guys remember the In Living Color skit um, back in the day um, when people had multiple jobs, sometimes I feel like I have 10 jobs, um, but I'm really busy and really loving every single minute of it. Claire, I'm going to ask you the same thing. Claire Cormier Tilke. Um, so I'm managing director of Heinz Asia Pacific. Uh, so I live in China Silicon Valley and focus on investing and real estate development across the region. Uh, I do also sit on the board of Zillow, and then I teach at Stanford on the intersection of tech and real assets. And so it's a fun spot to see new companies be born uh, that hopefully will have um, a diversity of leaders as they come into their own. So basically, neither of you are busy at all. Okay, thanks for confirming that. Um, let me let me ask you how you both met each other. All right, so this is a funny story. Um, well, we both met at Stanford Directors College, and I think it was a Sunday, uh, uh, the half session before the full day, and there was a lunch, and we just immediately zeroed in on each other and got to chatting, and just I would say the rest is history. Um, but I think what endeared me to Claire more than anything was, you know, I would say a particular dinner where, um, what you may not know, she's just an, uh, an amazing athlete. Um, and she talked about trying to uh, do a marathon in North Korea. And a certain diplomat was at our table and um, warned her not to do that. And, you know, she's endeared uh, to me ever since. So that's the story of Claire and meeting her. <laughs> it was a colored start. Yeah, it really was funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was a colored start trying to avoid uh, getting in trouble. But we, you know, just laughed all evening and connected on so many things and have just been, you know, I feel so lucky to have Merlene in my life. And we just have just this incredible friendship that's continued to grow ever since. Well, it sounds like now you're just bound by this story in addition to many other things. So uh, we'll, we'll say that for offline. But um, but OK, so essentially, you know, I, I shared some of the data earlier. Um, you know, again, only three percent of, of private board seats are held by women of color uh, and 11 percent of board seats in private companies are held by women altogether, about half of that in public board. So essentially, uh, you you've defied these odds in some way. When did you start thinking about board service or see yourself on a board? Was it something deliberate that you thought about in advance or, or something that you kind of fell into? Yeah. So I guess from day one, after finishing school, I really tried to be thoughtful about how was I going to use these, this gift, this opportunity I'd been given with an education to, um, to really get back not only in my own industry, but across the spectrum and in, in all of the, the broader things that I could touch. And so it started on the nonprofit side with a couple of very large nonprofits um, that touched the built environment and also healthcare, so a very large hospital system, um, and evolved from there. So I, I joined the board of a bank, a community bank, um, that was uh, in Houston, where I was from, and really opened my mind to the impact that I could have by touching another company and really helping them to think about strategy and asking the right questions. And how did they think about their sort of lending, representing uh, the, the community around them? 
And, you know, just in that, that example, um, you know, pulling back to, again, a very, uh, these things that touch our lives, right? And wealth creation, you, know, me, you made the point about board service, um, but, you know, only 8% of African-Americans own stock. Um, or, you know, African-Americans are 80%, you know, more likely to get turned down for a home loan when they have similar circumstances to their peers. So these are very important questions to bring to mind and to bring to the table and to affect business strategy for others. And, and once I saw the impact that that could have, it just became such an important part of, you know, my career and how I saw my service to my, to my community and my African-American community, certainly going forward. Claire, that's super powerful. And, you know, especially, uh, you know, Hearing that as someone who works in venture capital, where we know that there is a a significant wealth gap between Black Americans and white Americans, as well as other groups, um, thinking of board service as a way to give back is is a really powerful, powerful concept. Uh, Marlene, let me hear from you. How did you think about your first board and approach board service? Yeah, so uh, lucky enough, about six years ago, um, I was having a professional professional development conversation with my boss, uh, the former CTO of Intuit, and really just really got a sense that um, I wanted to approach it with how can the collective experiences that I've had really come together and ask, how can I help, right? And I think that mindset as an operator and now on a board has been instrumental in um, just being able to do this full time. And when I reflect back on it, I think uh, the archetype, if you will. Uh, The CFO CEO was a typical uh, profile for getting on a board, but I would say the Mm non-traditional aspect of what I bring to the table, technology, cybersecurity, digital transformation is now like even more um, relevant than ever. And so just, uh, you know, stumbling into my field was of course a a delight, Um, but I would say it's also how you approach service, which is how can I help has been the key to success for, for sure. You know, Marlene, one thing that you just kind of sparked in me as you shared that is the idea of having someone to sponsor you or give you that career advice around, uh, you know, new positions, new ways to make impact. Um, in fact, uh, I met you, Merlene, probably two months into my role when I was previously leading DEI at Pinterest two and a half months into moving to the West Coast. <laughs> and um, you've been incredibly supportive over the years. Um, and Merlene, you and Robin Washington started a group of extremely talented um, C-suite women of color who are interested in in joining, joining boards. I guess the question is about twofold. One, um, yeah, you know, are there others who have been instrumental in helping you consider and understand board service? Um, and then, and then I'd love to learn a little bit more about how you bring other women of color along. Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll, I think the understanding that uh, sponsorship is key, right? Where women are often, and I would say black women in particular, are often uh, over mentored and under sponsored. And so, you know, the different uh, groups that I have been fortunate to be a part of like Directors Academy, um, him for her, the Athena, and I can go on with all raise the board list. Everyone, um, and specifically James White, uh, who's the former CEO of Jama Juice, African American, who um, continues to be instrumental in my life till this day, have just been there for me as I started my career, um, a board service career, and continue to just shape um, who I am today. Um, and so the story of Robin, uh, who's also a, a mentor of mine, uh, happened actually during quarantine. Um, I would say she and I were both uh, at that period where we were getting inbound, like we haven't seen in a long, long time, and we wanted to spread that I love to um, others who are looking for their first opportunity. And so we decided to do a happy hour, uh, very low key. It's still very low key, which has grown immensely. And it was, who do you know? Uh, so Claire was one of my five and Robin had her five. And this group has just ballooned into something much, much bigger and really inspirational, right? Where there are some of us who are on boards and some of us who are looking to get on boards. And I'm all about accelerating um, opportunities for people who want to hustle in life. So that's that's who I am to my core. Well, but it's just, it's been such an example. It's like a Jackson Pollock that's just fractaling out in so many directions, right? As, as Merlene started this group and as small as the African-American, you know, Black and African-American female 
executive cohort is, it was actually Mm -hmm. pleasantly surprising how many new folks, some of us, that we had not met each other. You know, you you sort of start to realize, you know, kind of the few others in your in your industry or in your circle or geography. And so it was really encouraging to see this overlap and then other people bring, you know, bring from their own network and dig a little bit deeper. We were able to celebrate just all of the wins that there have been in this space. And it's just created this Incredible. I mean, sorority isn't the right word because I guess it gets sort of overused, but it really, it's almost like a sewing circle in in a funny way, because every time now a new African-American woman or black woman or woman of any color, frankly, is named to a public board. I mean, I, I think Rowling does the same thing. We just cold call her, right? <laughs> find her on LinkedIn and send her a note. And 100% of the time she answers because you know you're it's cold out there and uh and it it there is something when you're uh just finding other folks who are are like you and expanding and finding ways to amplify and really try to grow those numbers and grow that representation really for all underrepresented groups um but mm-hmm. but within this to really uh to see what we can do and what we can how we can help others bring something great to the table that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. And Claire, I'm curious for you, did you have a particular mentor that, you know, kind of led you to that Stanford <laughs> directors group or just giving back specifically in the way of, of serving on boards? Yeah, well, I was you know, very, very fortunate in that my early board service on private but for profit, so private uh, corporate board service had been less about uh call it uh, diversity or ethnic diversity and frankly more about age. And so Mm. uh, trying to just bring a a different uh, perspective. So coming in with just a tech angle or a millennial, a millennial angle, uh, I was fortunate in that in each of those cases, the board members, the first board that I joined, the average age, including me was 64 and I was 25. And so it was just such, such a spread. But within that, uh, the other board members had served uh, in so many different ways over the course of, of their career. And so they were very thoughtful about the other ways to, to add. So they'd never been a female of color, uh, but they had, you know, said, you know, here's a way to day one be able to, you know, you know, know the best places to dig in and, and how do you ask better, uh, better questions? How do you be the most um, supportive and inquisitive board member that, that you can be and serve better on committees, et cetera. And, and so much of this really is that, you know, Ken, it's like excellence is the floor. Um, you're really not representing yourself, but there is this, this real, real urgency of not only supporting your other, you know, the, the others who are out there on other boards, um, but realizing that you're really creating the experience for others to go and be a champion for this, uh, for this message and to grow representation. Um, and that, you know, we, we talked, you, you made the great, the great statement, Merlene, about, you know, mentorship versus sponsorship. But if there's anything that the Silicon Valley has been great at, it's finding something and scaling it. And so you look at things like, um, like Brad Gerstner and the board challenge and taking something and making it numerical with, you know, benchmark timelines yeah. and, and he and Rich Barton and other people just jumping in and saying, let's, let's, you know, really take this on. And, uh, and so I think, I don't know what you would even call that. It's more than sponsorship. It's like taking the wagon and, you know, pushing it up the hill. And so the more we can educate those who actually sit outside of our cohort, uh, I think that helps that level of sponsorship take place at a, at a, at a scaled level. You know, the beauty of that is right. That, you know, a, as women of color on boards, you've built this network and this community, um, but you're also teaching the people around you um, about your perspective and, and the business and the customers about your perspective. And it's really this collective thing um, that can only make both parties stronger. Um, that, that I guess I would call it everything from allyship, right, <laughs> um, and to personal advocacy. And I think that's that's amazing. I want to I want to ask um, how it feels, though, to be in the room 
And by the way, at this point in one's career, you know, most people that I talk to, myself included, um, were onlys in the room since school. Um, so it's not, uh, it's not a new feeling, but yeah, if you're 25 and the average age is 64, Claire, or like Merlene, you're going in and, and, you know, you're, you're new to this board or this discussion, how does it feel and what advice might you have for a woman of color who's, who's walking to that situation, um, afresh, uh, Merlene, maybe I'll start with you. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, um, Many of us, to your point, we have felt we have been one of um, so few for a long, long time. But I think this idea that you do belong has been instrumental. And I always anchor on what did I answer for myself that I could bring a value because that is what I that I anchor the conversation on, right? So cer- certainly start with the technology and cyber and all the expertise in my case, but really you have to want and to be passionate about the space that you want to collectively in your own individuals. I call boards your highest level team, right? And so this team needs to operate together and um, it's, it's, it's playing your individual parts, but also acting as a unit. And so I anchor on that and just know, I seriously, I, I think, you know, Claire talks about being a, a younger generation, same here. I was the first um, uh, person of color and, and certainly the, it was second woman at the time and just owning that room, um, but being confident in what I could contribute, but at the same time being very, very excited about it very different industry that I think I contribute on for the company to stay relevant. Um, so that that's the way I kind of think about the belonging, because if, if you're waiting for that permission to feel like your the numbers are, are for you, you're going to be waiting a long, long time. Mm-hmm. So, and by the way, one thing that Claire said um, previously around the numbers, I do think it's measuring what matters. And so we're starting to drive some of the KPIs that I think we do in any business context. And so we're applying that to really um, making forward um, progress on the numbers for getting more diversity, which is uh, very good to see. Yeah. So Claire, I don't know if that's the intent, but. No, definitely. It is. Yeah. And and no, I think Marlene hit it, you know, because you're a board member first, right? You're there to represent, you know, shareholder interests. You're there to make the company the best Mm -hmm. that it, that it can be and, and, and really um, support a broader, a broader mission. And so thank you. You lean into that. Uh, first on where you're all you know, united. And then I think, you know, as Merlene said, we each have an area of expertise. You, know, you wake up and you look like this every day. Uh, and so there's that natural perspective that you're going to bring uh, as a consumer of the product or as right, someone who's interacted or had some experience, right? Um, but I do think that it just comes from teaching. You know, you really want people to internalize the message as it's relevant and uh, and so, you know, just as an example, you know, with, you know, with real estate or the built environment or cities, you know, one of the conversations that, that we have and that, you know, my fellow board members have always been such great listeners about is like, you know, home ownership rates for African-Americans uh, are worse today by comparison to their peers than they were in 1900. And, you know, we're, we're 50 years plus after the Fair Housing Act. And so having that conversation and uh, and really talking about, you know, what can be done in the vertical where there is influence. And so it's not some big and amorphous issue, right? Tackling structural inequality is, is really hard. You can't do that before lunch. Uh, but you can think about, about uh, ways and things that can translate and that uh, can become, again, uh, an actionable set of, set of conversations and really represent that, that view. Well, I I am one of many that is uh, just, you know, so very thrilled to both have this time with you to get both of your perspectives, um, to to see you making the difference that you're making, um, to bring the conversation, for example, around home ownership. Um, I believe it's about 40, 41 percent for African-Americans versus about a little over 80 percent for white Americans, right, to the business and the potential customers. Um, And, you know, some of the things that I've picked up from the conversation are, you know, being passionate about the the business or the organization that you are on a board for, knowing the value that you are bringing, your expertise, as well as, you know, what you bring in terms of the way you've walked through the world. Um, And then also knowing that you belong there. It's just, these are super powerful messages. So I want to thank 
you, Merlene, and I want to thank you, Claire, for, for joining me for the discussion and, and hope to have you back soon.